Rural Doctors Association of Australia is seeking a meeting with the newly appointed Assistant Minister for Rural and Regional Health, Emma McBride, to discuss the implementation of the new Labor government's rural health commitments made during the election campaign. Joining me live now for more on this is RDAA CEO Peter Rutherford. Thank you for your time this evening, Peter. Firstly, how important is it for regional health to have a voice in the overarching health portfolio? Hi, thanks for having me. It, it's really important that rural has a voice. We know that the health outcomes for people living in rural and remote communities are worse than people living in the cities. And a lot of that is to do with access. And the maldistribution of our medical workforce is real. Um, and it, it's a, an increasing challenge that a lot of our rural and remote communities have to recruit doctors, but also retain them. So it's really, really important that we have a strong rural health service. And, um, and with the new government, it's certainly pleasing to see that they have actually allocated a specific portfolio um, with Emma McBride being appointed as the Assistant Minister for Rural and Regional Health. How suitable is Minister Emma McBride for the position? Oh, look, I think we couldn't have asked for anyone better. Um, I think, you know, the fact that she has a health background um, and has worked in the hospital system really will give her some insights and understanding, um, you know, in relation to the portfolio. And it, it's certainly welcomed and I, and I think it'll be, you know, a positive step going forward for rural and um, regional communities to have a strong voice in the new parliament. And what are the key Labor election commitments that we heard during the campaign that you will be focusing on discussing with the new Assistant Minister? Well, certainly um, they matched the coalition's commitment to invest $146 million. And we're really, really keen to see that come to fruition because there's some key elements to that commitment which will support the expansion of the National Rural Generalist Pathway. And that's certainly something that we're really keen to see. That's about training the right doctors with the right skills to meet the needs of our rural communities. So having more, you know, doctors with GP skills, but also skills to work in um, and provide emergency services and those um, more advanced skills, things like obstetrics, anaesthetics, but also mental health, paediatrics. So it's really about having the skills to meet the community need. Um, the other thing we're really keen to talk to um, the new minister about is about the Labor commitment to expand um, the district of priority area um, classification into outer metropolitan areas. We've had some concerns about that and I think we need to, you know, ensure that that commitment is managed really carefully because the last thing we want to do is drain doctors from the bush into the city. So it's really important that we get that with a balance. I do believe some of the topics you wanted to discuss with her, which you have touched on, include increasing and enticing opportunities for rural junior doctors, more incentive programs and increasing skilled training posts out in regional areas. Does this indicate or is there a shortage of rural doctors? Oh, look, there's definitely a shortage where we see the numbers where, you know, in our capital cities, we're seeing well over 400 full-time equivalents per 100,000 FTE uh, or per 100,000 head of population rather you know, medical practitioners working in the cities. And when we get out into rural communities, that number drops to about 256 or 36 um, full-time equivalents per 100,000 head of population. So we know the maldistribution is real. It is there. Um, we see a lot of pressure on the, you know, regional hospital system as well. And often that's a, you know, comes out when rural hospitals um, don't have the staff and don't aren't able to provide the services services locally and we see more and more people having to travel to access services. But also that issue of travelling to have to access services also contributes to the poorer health outcomes. And that's not just with doctors, that's also with allied health professionals um, as well. So the access issue and burden for rural Australians and remote Australians is a real challenge and it certainly has an impact on their health outcomes. Sounds like this upcoming discussion with the new Assistant Minister is very important then indeed. Thank you so much for your time this evening, Peter Rutherford. Thank you for having me.